Resolution number 361-13, whereas it has become necessary for the city to engage various professional service providers, and whereas the city desires to appoint such professionals by a fair and open process, and whereas the city issued an advertised request for qualifications on the city's website and in official newspapers on Monday, July 8, 2013, and whereas the qualification statements were reviewed to determine applicants that have met the minimum professional, administrative, and financial criteria described in the RFQ, and based upon the totality of the information contained in the qualification statements, including information about the reputation and experience of each applicant and ability to best serve the needs of the City of Hackensack, now therefore let it be resolved by the Council of the City of Hackensack that the City finds it in, the, in its best interest to qualify the following professional service providers, City Attorney McElroy, Deutsch, Mulvaney and Carpenter, Labor Attorney Juan C. Fernandez and Giblin and Giblin, Bond Counsel Gibbons, PC, and Willens Goldman and Spitzer, PA, Tax Appeal Attorney Mark A. Raso, Raso, Esquire, O'Donnell McCord, PC, Gittleman, Mulstock and Chukowski, LLP, Eric M. Bernstein and Associates, Kaufman, Samarero and Liebman, LLP, Redevelopment Attorney Archer and Grainer, PC, Affordable Housing Council, Jeffrey R. Serenian and Associates, and Philip M. Meisner, Esquire, Special Litigation Council, Light De Palma Greenberg, LLC, Dakota Fitzpatrick and Cole, Carmagnola and Retarde, Retardi, LLC, Rogat McCarthy, LLC, Roth Aquina, LLC, Chase and Lehner and Lamparello, Florio and Kenny, LLP, Greco and D. Filippo, LLC, John Zunick, Esquire, Thomas B. Hanrahan and Associates, LLC, Dick Tass Gillen, PC, B. Beatty Padovano, LLC, Robert B. Woodruff, Esquire, Scott Mooney, Esquire, Marinello and Marinello, PC, Dario Yacker Suarez and Albert, LLC, Consulting Municipal Engineer, Boswell McClave Engineering and Arcadis, Municipal Auditor slash Financial Advisor, D. Maria and D. Maria, LLP. Be it further resolved that the mayor is hereby authorized to execute contracts with the above qualified professional service providers. Will someone please offer? Offer. Offered by Mr. Battaglia. Second. Seconded by Mr. Sims. Roll call. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Councilman Sims. Aye. Councilwoman Greenman. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Resolution number 362-13. Okay. We need to change the tape. <laughs> Okay, we're back in business. Resolution number 362-13, whereas the City of Hackensack has a need for boundary and topographic surveying to be performed at redevelopment lot C, and whereas surveying services are necessary to protect the redevelopment and general welfare of the city, and whereas Boswell McClave Engineering, South Hackensack, New Jersey, submitted a proposal to the city to serve as a surveyor to the city with the total contract amount not to exceed $17,500. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council hereby authorizes the contract with Boswell McClave Engineering. Will someone please offer? Offer. Mr. Sims. Second. Seconded by Mr. Battaglia. Roll call. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilman Sims? Aye. Councilwoman Greenman? Aye. Mayor LeBrock? Aye. Resolution number 363-13, whereas the City of Hackensack is the owner of the Recreation Center known as the Malone Marinello Building located at 116 Holt Street, whereas the property has a spacious lawn area located west of the building, whereas the Hackensack Public School District operates a facility known as the Early Childhood Development Center located at 100 South Main Street, which is in the immediate area of 116 Holt Street, whereas there are no on-site outdoor recreational facilities at this location, and the district has requested and the city has agreed to grant the district the use of the property upon the terms and conditions set forth in the license agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to execute a license agreement with the Hackensack Public School District for the use of this property. Will someone please offer? Offer. Second. Offered by Mr. Sims, second by Mr. Battaglia. Roll call, please. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilman Sims? Aye. Councilwoman Greenman? Aye. Mayor LeBrost? Aye. Resolution number 364-13. 
whereas there exists in the city of Hackensack a need for a professional public relations consultant to provide services to the city in the areas of marketing and public relations, and whereas at the July 22nd meeting, the city council elected the right associates having an address of P.O. Box 1301, West Caldwell, New Jersey, to serve as the professional public relations consultant. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council that the mayor is hereby authorized and directed to execute a contract with the right associates to perform the services of professional public relations consultant. Will someone please offer? Offer. Offered by Mr. Sam. Second. Second. By Mr. Pataglia. Roll call. Councilman Pataglia? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Councilman Sims? Aye. Councilwoman Greenman? Aye. Mayor LeBros? Aye. All I have, Mayor. That was a big one. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for sitting through that. It was pretty extensive. Can we have our consensus agenda back, Mr. Strudel? <laughs> <laughs> no. That was, that was a lot of stuff. All right. Uh, Mayor? If, if I may, yes. for a moment before you go to the public hearing, sure. uh, I certainly want to thank this council for um, enacting the resolution in connection with my uh, uh, my position. Um, I needless to say, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled to be able to stay here for a little while longer for a whole variety of reasons. Um, probably the two most important are the fact that uh, there's so much going on and there's so many projects that uh, we've started together here. And, and I'd like to be part of continuing them and hopefully seeing some of them to a, uh, to a conclusion. And, and probably the, the, the most important reason is the fact that, uh, you know, m many of you, including you, Mayor, very often almost tease me about the fact of how proud I am to be from Lodi, and Lodi is my hometown. But uh, in the eight years, or nearly eight years that I've been here, uh, Hackensack has become another hometown. It's a great community, great people, uh, I enjoy working with everyone here, and uh, I look forward to doing that for a little while longer. And um, all I can tell you is that I'll uh, keep working as hard at this thing as I've tried to for the past eight years. And certainly, I'm at your, you know, at your service, and uh, uh, hopefully, we'll move forward together as uh, as things uh, really, really progress in Hackensack. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks. Close uh, this part. Mm -hmm. Close this part. No, you just need open to move just open. Okay. This time I'm going to open the meeting to the public. <coughs> Can I please get a motion to open this meeting to the public? Offer. Offered. Second. I want to know. Second. I want to know. All in favor? Okay, at this time. Or, yes. Yes. I know that some people. New ground rules, folks. Five minute limit. Okay. Um, there's also a clipboard by the city clerk. If you have any questions or something that you want, don't want to ask here, but you need to write down some or get some information, please put your uh, information on that clipboard. All right. When you come to the podium, give your name and your address, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Good evening, Brownita Sharif, 341 Second Street, Hackensack, New Jersey. Um, good evening, buenos noches, privet. To our honorable mayor, deputy mayor, and city council. The home team, Hackensack Organization for Multicultural Education. I see Michael Massoni here. I don't see any other, other members. I think they went on vacation, a lot of them in Florida. Mm -hmm. Home welcomes you with open arms. Our new city government into office. We consider it an honor and a privilege to stand before you. Home, again, is, stands for Hackensack Organization for Multicultural Education. It was, it was organized in 2001 by a diverse group of concerned citizens designed to see our city escape the decline in quality of life that so many residents of other cities around the country are facing and living through today. While 12 years have passed, we, the remaining six members of the home team, John Love, Brownita Sharif, Marilyn Santiago, Victor DeOleo, Michael Massoni, and Brian Greco, continue to exhibit our passion for improving what already makes Hackensack a great place to live and learn. Our mission then and now is to forge strong long-term partnerships between our local government, our local businesses, and other like-minded community groups that will spearhead and lead projects that provide quality of life enhancement for all of our residents, families, individual business owners, and the backbone of our city, senior citizens. We strongly believe that positive project development will keep our children and our young adults off the street, 
provide space for our seniors to socialize and have fun, provide space for an essential service to be administered and create jobs. Our two primary project goals have been for the past 13 years to develop an outdoor community pool, either above ground or below ground, possibly at the following parks, Johnson, Faschini, Carver, Polify. We also envision a splash pad like the one on Polify Road um, in all the major parks such as Carver, Union Park, and Columbus Park. Number two, to develop a century located nonprofit multicultural center. To get a better understanding of these types of facilities, we visited a number of neighbor, neighboring communities to discuss with the management team budgeting and operations. Some of these facilities included the YMC of Hackensack, JCC on the Palisades and Tenafly, the Rhoda Center in Teaneck, and Bogota Recreation. We also contacted the Al Wooten Junior Center in Los Angeles, California, nonprofit program developed for the positive change in a community where their founder lost her son during a drive-by shooting. These valuable business discussions have truly heightened and motivated us to believe that we too can see our development become a reality. In the past, we gathered many signatures of residents that supported our dream. While some residents have moved on and some have passed on, we are willing to canvas our neighbors again to garner their support and validate our project. We already have one local business owner who has taken an interest in our project and has submitted a proposal which is attached to this letter by Mr. Zeke Moat. I don't know if he's here, he was here. Home is committed to roll up our sleeves and getting down to work from the beginning to the end. We are hopeful that you will concur with the heartfelt vision of a community pool and multicultural center. As we all know, there's no place like home. Respectfully submitted, Brownita Sharif, John Love, Marilyn Santiago, Victor DeLeo, Michael Massoni, and Brian Greco. I would also like to thank Ms. Nicole Osborne for helping us to construct this letter. Um, and I also would like to add, we too, myself and John and other members of this community lost two family members at age 19 on Central Avenue to gun violence. So that has fueled our fire and we're willing to do anything that we can to help make this dream of ours come true. And I think of a lot of people in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, and thank you. Stay safe, Thank you. Good evening, guys. Hello. Hi. My name is Kadira Sharif. Um, I'm 19 years old, and I was wondering if you guys could like have a skating ring out there for the teenagers because we have nothing to do on the weekend. We basically be in the house all the time, and we we just want to like have fun and hang out. Just, just to have fun. That's basically it. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Deborah Smith. I live in the city of Patterson, and I come before you tonight as a representative of the North Jersey Developmental Center Family Association. Back in August of 2012, the Governor's Task Force on Developmental Center Closures decided to close two of the seven state developmental centers in North Jersey. North Jersey Developmental Center and Woodbridge Developmental Center are the only two centers in North Jersey. To move these centers, excuse me, if these centers close, it would devastate the family members who live in the North that visit their family. I am here tonight to ask you to pass a resolution and send it to the governor in support of our cause to keep the developmental centers open. My daughter, Keisha Smith, has lived in, uh, as a resident of North Jersey Developmental Center for 27 years. I am angry and saddened over the decision to close her home. I'm deeply concerned over her future and well-being and the possibility of her being placed 100 miles from her family. I am terrified over the adverse impact such a distance will have on my family's ability to keep contact with my daughter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Keisha is 42 years old, profoundly intellectually disabled. She has limited functional speech. She has aggressive behavior issues, and she suffers from fatigue mal seizures and has experienced 50 to 100 per day. 
But because of the care that she has received at North Jersey Developmental Center, her seizures are under control. In fact, I can tell you that we have not seen her have a seizure in over 10 years. <clears throat> there are not enough community uh, centers, group homes, places for that equal to or provide the type of care that my daughter and residents like her in developmental centers are currently receiving. Developmental centers operate under what we call the ICF-MF model, which is the Intermediate Care Facility for Mentally Retarded. That is the most comprehensive care that our most vulnerable population of the developmental community receives. In fact, in order for me to agree for my daughter in, uh, to go to a group home, I would have to have or sign a community care waiver. That basically says that I would waive my daughter's rights to have the continued care that she is currently receiving and currently still needs that is provided for her at North Jersey Development Center. Just as some background, in 1999, the Supreme Court ruled on a case and decided that individuals should live in the least restrictive setting as long as the services are available in the community, the services are appropriate for those individuals and those who oppose, excuse me, I'm sorry. The services are appropriate for those individuals and they do not oppose community placement. This is the state's basis for individuals moving out of developmental centers yet not all the services in the Olmstead decisions are being met. I agree and respect the Olmstead decision. I believe that those who have the functional ability and the desire to live in the community should do so. But not all individuals living in developmental centers can function in a, a community group home. My daughter would not survive in the group home, nor would people like her who, live, who um, live at the developmental center. My daughter started out in the group home before going to North Jersey Developmental Center. And although the caretakers had all good intentions, they could not handle her aggressive behavior. They could not handle the number, the number of seizures that she had in a day. They could not handle getting her medication into her twice a day. Developmental centers, North Jersey developmental centers, have accomplished that task because they provide the kind of care that she needs. She needs the care that she's been receiving for 27 years in North Jersey developmental center. To transfer her 100 miles one way from her family would be devastating. <clears throat> There was a survey uh, provided, uh, done back in 2009 of all the parents and community guardians, excuse me, of residents in the developmental center. And that question was asked if they preferred their loved one to live in a developmental center or a group home. 96% of the parents, guardians, family members opted for developmental centers. I come to you tonight to speak on behalf of my daughter and residents that is living in the North Jersey Developmental Center, Woodbridge Developmental Center, in fact, all of the developmental centers in the state of New Jersey, and ask for your support to help us to stop the closures of these centers so that the people who reside in those centers continue to get the services they so desperately need. Thank you very much. Could you please, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Could you please leave your information with the city manager, please? Yes, and I have some information I can If you could, thank you. you. Appreciate it. You have a sample resolution or something? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, good. Can I come around? Yeah. Sir? Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi. <clears throat> Hello. My name is Sam Friedman. I'm a resident of Englewood, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Deputy Mayor and members of the council, I've come, I'll make my remarks very brief. I come to support and echo the remarks of Deborah Smith who spoke before me. Um, my sister Jackie has lived at the North Jersey Developmental Center for 46 of her 47 years 
And uh, the point I would like to emphasize uh, with the council is that the set, some 700 people in North Jersey uh, who are affected by these closures are the very most unfortunate individuals in the state in terms of the severity of their intellectual uh, disabilities and in terms of the hand they were dealt, most of them at or shortly after birth. They had no choice in any of this. Uh, they also represent a much more severely intellectually disabled group of people than the less disabled who are often able to do well in community settings and in group homes. What we are for is choice, and what we are against is coercion. What is going on right now is a severe form of co coercion where I have personally talked to two family members, guardians, in the past 48 hours who have been told by the state you had better agree to move your loved one out of North Jersey Developmental Center now because if you don't, there are no beds anywhere around here, and if you don't agree to go to this place in the Pine Barrens, about 100 miles south of here, uh, if you wait, we're gonna, we're, you'll likely end up with your loved one even further away down near Cape May. The families were not listened to by the state task force. It's fairly well known now that a very cynical political deal was affected. Uh, st unfortunately, state government, it is very worst. And the uh, survey that uh, Ms. Smith alluded to where well over 90% of the guardians, folks like me, said we want our loved one to stay at a developmental center was ignored. This is not what the Supreme Court meant when it said that the, that the disabled should not be discriminated against and should not be forced to be in discrimin discriminatory uh, settings. This is a case where our loved ones will never know, most of them, whether they are in the community or not. So they need to be in the place where they can be best taken care of. I hope that gives you a, a little idea of what we're up against. Uh, there are 700 individuals who are being forcibly evicted by the governor and by the state. They have no say. Most of their parents are either uh, the average age at, at these two developmental centers of the residence is about 50. Uh, so most of their parents are very elderly or are gone, and uh, their siblings are already getting up in years like me and uh, are struggling to, to finish up their jobs and take care of their families. So it's, you're, you're not going to hear one of these, these disabled residents. You're going to hear the few of us representing the larger group uh, against a very large and very ugly institutional force here. So I thank you for listening and hope that you'll be able to see this issue for what it really is and help support us as we go forward in a very difficult uphill struggle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. Good evening. Good evening, Janelle Blackman from CWA Local 1040. I am from Trenton, New Jersey. I represent about 800 of the workers at the institutions that they just spoke about. Mm -hmm. This is about 2,000 workers that would be displaced and lose their jobs if these centers were to close. I come tonight to ask you all for your support in passing resolution as over 15 other town councils have done to the governor to ask to keep these centers open. The state's plan to move these residents into community group homes is ill-conceived and deadly as stated by former Deputy Commissioner of the New Jersey Division of Developmental Disabilities for 32 years, Bernie White. He said that moving these residents into community group homes would result in a 47% higher death rate. These individuals, unfortunately, because they are so disabled, cannot endure the change of moving locations like you and I can. These statistics are gathered from the states where this has been done, like California and Ohio. And if that were not reason enough, two of the family members of the residents in these centers, as well as 10 of the AFSCME, IFD, and CWA workers live in your town, Hackensack. They are taxpayers and they live here. They share an, a total income, combined income, of over $500,000 a year here in Hackensack. I say that because the governor's task force on developmental center closures determined that finances lost to local cities would not hurt you. I ask you, can anyone stand to lose any part of the greater $91 million that will be lost by losing these jobs in these hard economic times? Or have the city, or can the city support any added costs that these group homes would need 
such as increased law enforcement and EMT workers. We are here asking you to stand with the residents of Woodbridge Developmental Center and North Jersey Developmental Center. Stand with the residents, stand with the workers, and stand with the most vulnerable of this uh, community in New Jersey. I ask for you to pass a resolution and I will leave my card with the city clerk or whomever you would like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, this is my father, Franklin Damoski. My name is Danny Damoski. We live on uh, 148 Division Place in Hackett, New Jersey. Um, proposal on the, the, the issues we're having on the street is we live on a corner of Porter Street in Division. Um, and recently, they've, we've, we've noticed that there are signs up that says residential parking only on Porter Street. The Division uh, Place is between South Hackett and Hackett. Um, so the problem we have is we cannot park on Hackensack at all. South Hackensack is a residential parking only. We don't live in South Hackensack. Well, our tenants. Um, so currently what we, we're having issues is we have tenants in our house, um, our second floor, and about two weeks ago they came to a city um, to, to retrieve parking permits for to park on Porter Street, um, and they were not allowed. Um, they were not allowed because um, based on your city ordinance, um, you must live on Porter Street in order to require um, a parking permit for the street. Since we live on the corner, and our address, we, we do live, we're, our, our house address is 148 uh, Division Place, Hackett, New Jersey. Um, we're, we're, we, are, we are a bit like confused in why we, as a resident of Hackett, we're, we're not allowed permits um, to park on either Porter or Division. Um, Division, I mean, I mean, the reason, the, the problem we're having is the Porter Street is, is, is a residential parking only. Um, since we're residents, why can't we uh, park on those streets? Can you look into this, Steve, as far as? I'm very, I'm very familiar, familiar with, with it. it. And we, I, I this just is, met with, with a gentleman a couple I, weeks I, ago. I met with the gentleman, uh, traffic uh, was very involved in this. Right. And it's simply a matter of the way the ordinance is, the way the ordinance is written. The address is Division Street. Uh, they cannot, they're not eligible for the resident parking sticker unless there would be an ordinance change, right. which would include that. Um, I, and I tried, you know, I, I did explain what the position was. Um, but how can, uh, how can it be residential parking if we have a sticker? Me and my son. All right, so the, issue, the issues we're having is before, before, today, before this new uh, add on you guys added in 2009, um, we as residents of, of Hackensack. We do have parking permits on our cars. Our new residents that are coming, or new tenants that are coming in, um, cannot get these because after 2009, you guys added this Porter Street uh, entire length ordinance. But before this ordinance in 2009 was added, this, this separate um, add-on, um, it, it just said, uh, basically, you cannot park on the street between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. if you're not a resident of Hackett, New Jersey. So we, as residents, I've been resident for 27 years. Well, my father has been resident for 45 years. Not, we not do have parking per, uh, parking permits, but our res, our new uh, tenants that are coming in do not cannot get these uh, parking permits. Again, it's just it's a matter of the ordinance now. Whether if the council would want to consider possibly an amendment to the ordinance, the traffic department would prepare that. But yeah, it's, it, 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 the street doesn't necessarily call for residential parking. Right. The, re, the tenant's address is division. And that, that's the root of the whole problem. Right. Um, it's just obviously a difficult situation, but I have to respect the position that the traffic department has taken. They are abiding by the, they're abiding by the law, by the, by the ordinance. Uh, I'm sure everybody realizes, and I, and I tried to tell the gentleman, you start making exceptions, and then you're actually violating the ordinance, and that becomes a very slippery slope at that point. So, um, uh, all right. Um, uh, another issue we also have is our, a lot of our mail does not come to our address. It gets sent to Division Street. Um, so on the corner of Hyler Street and Division Place, there's a sign that says Division Street. At the corner of Porter Street and Division, it says Division Place. At the corner of West Street, which is the next block over, it says Division Street. So our house is on Division Place. If you cross, once you cross completely, basically Hover Street, you go on to Green Street, it's mm -hmm. Division Street again. Right. So, so are, these, these, are all, a, these are all Hackensack signs? Yes. 
No, no, it wasn't it actually is so, continual straight and it it's stops. No, it's straight, it actually, it's Hobart Street kind of blocks, breaks it off. So there's a house there and the house continues on to Green Street. Mm -hmm. um, there is a Hackettsack, there's a 148 uh, on Division Street right. and there's a 148 on Division Place. Yeah, I see. Okay. And then there's a 140, okay. 146 yeah. on Division Place yeah. and there's a 146 yeah. on Porter Street. Yeah. So both of these addresses, which is a commercial property, a lot, a lot of our mail is going to their property. That yeah, sounds confusing. Yeah, so that whole street, basically from State Street, which is South State Street, all the way to Hobart Street, mm -hmm. should be Division Place. It's, I was going to say, what's the right, Division Place is the right designation? Uh, well, as we, uh, our address is Division correct, Place. Correct, correct. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been living there for 22 years, for example. And I know it's a Division Place. I'll check that. That that should be fixable. I, I wasn't aware of this. Yeah, one. so and then also when, once you cross over Hobart Street, it's Division Street again. Um so basically from from Porter Street to West Street, that one little like stretch of street is right. division place. The West of the signs. How, how many tenants with cars in your house? Well we uh, have we have one we, we, we have a new we have a new tenant okay. right now. So it's one car. And that's yeah. me that the owner says, stating for the re resident, he doesn't state for the address on the border street. He says, states. No, yeah. as a resident, right. yeah. Real resident. Mm -hmm. So as a resident of Hackettech, I believe we should get these parking permits. I mean, our new tenant should get this parking permit. Um, also, what we noticed is there's a, lot of, there's a lot of vehicles parked on our street that do have those street, those stickers. Right. And that says resident of Hackettech. Um, but they're residents of of uh, of Hackettack from um, basically West Street or or Hover Street. Right. So the only I mean, certain only certain streets are part of the program. That's the problem. Well, and the sign says it says city it says city it says a Hack city uh, it says resident of Hackettack, New Jersey, at the city of Hackettack. Doesn't this word in its in, in clear content doesn't really it doesn't, say it doesn't specify the that. Um, well, this little slump sum right here, uh, Porter Street, entire street. But if you look at other ordinance for other streets, they, they specify the whole, um, basically saying of the word, of the actual street. Um, example, the, between these following streets, you, you, it's required a, a parking permit. But for, for, for our street, it's just an add-on that was added on in 2009. Um, so it doesn't really specify that only our street right. ha it requires a parking permit. The, the council is going to meet again in two weeks for our, our executive session. Um, Debbie, if you could get me a copy of that, or all the, the council members, copy of that resolution. Um, we'll all look at it. Um, I'll personally drive over and look at this. I'm curious now that it breaks into place and street myself. I don't know how that can happen. Yeah, that but, would, uh, that should be fixed. And, and we'll revisit it and, mm -hmm. and look. Because, but we, uh, we, 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 resident of Hawkins, we pay taxes. No, I understand that. No question. Well, everybody has mm -hmm. has a right to buy mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. stickers. Okay. Even my my for, for my tenants. If yeah, I don't right. have a sticker for my tenants, I will have no right to come or pay my taxes. See, they they have stickers. It's the tenants is the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Poor tenants. But we also have a lot of commercial vehicles parking on our street on Porter Street. Well, on, um, on basically on Porter Street. So, even if our tenant tries to park on Porter Street. There really is no right. parking available. We have a driveway. Uh, we, we're recently we're, we're recently um, trying to get uh, let him offer offer him to to park out there. But we and our family have we have four cars. Right. We can barely park in our driveway, and his car is just really nowhere. Right. We can, let us we can park. let us revisit the resolution because we, we haven't resolution. seen I haven't seen that. When in two thousand nine was that passed? By the way. Well, it says eight eighteen two thousand nine. Okay, so it was then. It says eight eighteen, and we when we apply for the sticker. It was we are, April, yeah. April 3rd, 2009. Yeah. This is the sticker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, re we'll all look at the resolution. We'll go over it. We'll, we'll discuss it close. Or we'll and discuss the it. gentleman uh, by the police department who gives the stickers, I forgot his name. Aquila. Lieutenant Aquila. Yeah, Lieutenant Aquila, yeah. Yeah. Aquila. He, he says, oh, that time those stickers, they were not allowed to give. So yeah. there's another issue that we're having is is, is there the police department saying that our, our stickers and our cars current cars are, are not valid anymore. We're way past the five minute guys. Okay. Yeah. And we we have a lot more people to go, but we're, I promise you're going to revisit. We'll look at it. I'll personally drive down to look at it. Okay. And, uh, Thank right. you. Thanks for your time, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.
Say that again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first we first we have to wait the two weeks till we meet again. Well, he's he's not going to get it right now. Depending on what the council may do, if he applies now, he won't get it. I understand it, but we don't have the power right now. We have to go through traffic. We have to discuss it as a group, which we cannot do we right here back tonight. You. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barreto. Thank you for being patient. Joe Barreto, Poplar Avenue. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Good City evening. Council, Steve, Mr. Scrivo. Um, I just wanted to discuss quickly the appointment of temporary um, municipal court judge, Richard Tukvorian. Yes. Um, earlier, Ms. Heck read off um, about eight RFQs for city attorney, municipal prosecutor, et cetera. Was there one for the temporary municipal court judge issued? I don't believe you need an RFQ for a, a, uh, a judge here. Mr. Scrivo? Yeah, Mayor, that was um, done through direct appointment um, because through the ordinance. And actually, that was a corrective appointment done tonight. Right. Um, that appointment had been done um, at the last public right. meeting, but the Superior Court of New Jersey had an issue with respect to the wording of the resolution I remember. of appointment, so it was mm -hmm. redone this evening. Correct. But it, there is no RFQ required, I believe, for a, a judgeship. Correct. Right. So even the other ones are all, the only reason I asked was the other ones are all legal positions, basically, and this one is one as, as well, where you're hiring someone and you're offering them a position and they're getting paid, isn't it? Because, especially because of the pay to play that came into existence that's, in 2005. That's, that's why there's a, a RFQ process. Right, yes. but so wouldn't there be one for this position as well? Right. Being Hopefully that, that so for judgeships. he had Mayor. close to $3,900 given in campaign contributions. Through you, Mayor, um, the, the answer to that would be no. Um, under the local public contracts law, professional services contracts are for precise legal fees, not for a judicial position. Um, this judicial position would take him out of any contention of um, uh, handling professional services for the uh, city, so it would be a conflict of interest. It's a right. direct appointment. So it's actually, it's actually part of the judiciary, um, through uh, administered through the entire Superior Court of New Jersey. So the answer is no. It doesn't isn't required to be to be uh, run as a professional services contract under the local public contracts law. Okay. So even though it's a professional service, it's not considered because it is a judgeship. Is that because it's judicial? Yes. Oh, and then the, so the short answer. Okay, so then the other, so the RFQs are only based on, on professional they have services. To, okay, so the temporary this was is this done through then through Hack and Tech itself or is this statewide? I just wanted to. Well, that, that's a state would be a state. Uh, mayor, through you, every municipality has to have a superior uh, has, has a municipal court judge, some more than others, um, because of the volume of the court. Um, the superior court has required Hack and Tech to, in addition to have its um, full-time judge to also have a kind of what we'll call a part-time judge as well. Um, so that's why there are two, and um, every town is required to have that. And it's, it's a direct appointment, really, a uh, combination of the superior court's structure over the court system, as well as um, the ordinance in place that requires a, 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 a second judge. Okay. I, I thank you for the clarification. I didn't know if it was just a hire. That's why I wanted just to, to make sure that. No problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Have a good evening. You too. Good evening. Good evening. City Council. <laughs> Tiffany Smith, Prospect and Hackersack. Um, I have an issue I'd like to address. I'm born and raised in Hackersack, 37 years. And I'm still in the era where when things do go wrong in Hackersack, we say, not in Hackersack, like that. So on August 14th, when my son comes home and tells me, my son who's, he's not a straight A student, but nobody in my immediate family has, has a record, anything, and has comes in the house upset mom um i got stopped by the police he doesn't drive he's 15. let me make that a statement 15 going to i should have piggybacked off of miss sharif and the other woman from hobart but 
but he was going to an actual program that I researched to get my son in. One of the few that is in Hackensack for, for our young children. And I'm a single mother that refuses to lose my son to the street, refuses. So when he's walking, and just because of the area he's in, and two police ride up on him, freeze, you know, I'm like, did they pull their guns on you? I'm like, up oh, now, I work nights, so I was resting, and I jump up, I'm like, what do you mean they put, you know, I was ready to head to the police station, but I'm like, no, I'll address it to higher authority. I don't want to get arrested <laughs> going to the police station, I read. So I'm like, you know, and they patted him down and they found his change and they found a brush. And just because he was walking down Essex Street past, like he didn't get to La Costena yet, the restaurant on the corner of Newman, and he was going to McDonald's and then going to a program that he's in in Conklin. And he gets stopped and question at 15 and that's not an experience I want to even I don't even like getting pulled over for a, a wrong turn by a police so it was very hurtful to know that my son had to experience something like that and I said I should have piggybacked off of them because he was going to a program but how many kids are out here just you know trying to ride their bikes or hanging out because Hackensack doesn't have the movie theaters that I hear my mother talk about that was on Main Street and stuff like that. I was in-house watching TV and stuff, but these kids nowadays, they need somewhere to be. They need, you don't know how excited we was when we did get that little, you know, that little sprinkler on Powerfly Road, but my kids are 12 and 15, they outgrown that. So I would like to see a pool or something. Yeah, there's the rec, but to be honest, you're paying like $65 and up just for six weeks. Whereas if we have like a pool and we pay membership, even if it's a membership charge, you know, we pay a lot of taxes in Hackensack. And if we're paying so much into the taxes, we can't afford to put our kids in certain things, you know, camps and Six a thousand dollars summer camp stuff like that, so it's hard, and kids will find trouble. And my, I just want to make that statement: like my son wasn't even looking for trouble; he was minding his business, and trouble almost found him. And we all know that he could have moved the wrong way, and things could have turned out different. I'm blessed that my son made it home to me that day, but it could have very well turned out different. And even if you guys could address that, I understand the police do have some people to worry about, but they, they should be more vigilant before they just stop because they don't know how that could affect that child, that that innocent child. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because an innocent child could turn, well, if they're gonna pull me over anyway, you know, or not pull me over, I'm sorry, stop me anyway for doing nothing. Right. You have a date, why didn't you? August 14th, and it was between, like, he leaves the house between 12, 1130 on 1 Essex Street, Chicago. Okay. It was Wednesday, August 14th. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, Gwen Jackson, 138 Union Street, Hackensack, New Jersey. I'm back with regard to the Ferretti uh, carting and hauling. Mm -hmm. Steve, you, I know you spoke to the owner about this situation, Number and it was good for a little bit, but now they've started again parking. Uh, Friday, they had a truckload of garbage. Did they? Yes, a truckload. I've, I've been trying to watch that, because I go by there a lot. You know? It was horrible. Had my, you know, it was beautiful weather, had my windows open. <laughs> my Remember, God. they parked, they parked uh, a truck that had garbage in yes, it? Yes, full, overnight. full to the brim, because I had a confrontation with the, one of the drivers who was going to park another truck in front of my house, and he told me to move up, and I said, I'm not moving because you had a truck here all night with stinking garbage, and he confronted me, and I said, I'm not moving, and so, um, you know, it was all night with the garbage. It took about two or three days before the odor calmed itself down, so I don't know what's going on, but they purchased two other trucks, and it seems like they're growing. 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's a quality of life issue. They're parked all up and down Union Street. I mean, you know, I mean, they have a right to do business. But, you know, who wants garbage trucks with loads of garbage in front of their house? Well, you, you've been here. <laughs> you've been here for a number of these meetings. Yes, I have. But parking the truck is not something, the truck on the street. It's not something we have too much power over. I know. Parking legal. I know you told but he's me. Not allowed, he certainly is not allowed to have garbage overnight. And we have, we've been watching that closely now. And there's something that runs out from underneath the truck. Yeah. Don't, I don't know what it is. I don't, you know, I don't know what's inside I'll try of the to, truck. I'll try, to, I'll try to get Can we get the it. Board of Health on that again, Steve? I'm we, sorry? The board of Health tickets and... <laughs> yeah, between the Board of Health and Property Maintenance, they've both been keeping right. closer. Now, mm -hmm. the one individual from Property Maintenance, I kind of assigned him... Right. Could like take a daily check. He ended up being in the hospital for a couple of days last week or two okay. weeks ago. You know what I'm talking about. I think and, especially and maybe about that, whether we're going to stay on top of them. I'll, we'll get on it again. I apologize. Uh, no problem. I'll just keep coming until. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Steve, can increase the, the fines? Can increase it? Uh, that was a whole discussion. You you know you remember right. it. Too. We had some real problems with that. But go ahead, put into. Allowed to have the trucks mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yes, friend. good evening. Good evening. Oh, my name is Jermaine Fry, 340 Hudson Street. Okay. And I'm, I'm hearing about the kids in the youth because I work with them here. I'm born in Hackensack. I, I came back, that was like in 2003, but I was raised in Alabama. And I was raised in a little, little bitty town. They couldn't handle me. They couldn't handle me because I'm from here, from the city. Um, I'm, I'm into everything. Mm -hmm. So as coming up, we, we had the same thing. Hackensack is a big spot, but coming up, we had nothing. So we had to put our heads together and make something positive. Same thing here goes on. I tell them it's going on down south, the cops and everything. So we, we had a positive group. And that's what I would like. The group I had down south, we all, them guys are older now. Those are older guys, new generation coming up, they say. But I would like to do that with the youth here. I hear them. They say they want to have fun. I, I, well, yeah, when I came here, my aunt told me down south, when you go back home, you take yourself where you go. Well, I did. I did, and I pray for the lady by her daughter because I'm a recovered person who have epilepsy too. And hey, I done been, I done been all the negative stuff. I done been shot twice, everything, and I used to be here every drink. I used to work, I was working, I went to school, I used to drink, and I used to cut up a hackers act too. But hey, all your officers, they know me. They know I changed. A lot of people know I changed. And I'm, I let my light shine. I speak, I speak. To, I done been to all churches, I work with all pastors, even. Pastor Brian Inglewood, all the Pastor Inglewood, they, they know me. I just come from the Stop and Frisk meeting with an organization for that in, in um, New York City. Two hours in me, and I'm on the bus with Reverend Al Sharpton on the 24th of YMDC. I didn't, I, I'm, all I do is speak my piece and say my ideas. I didn't say the ideas to Cory Booker and Corzine. I don't know if y'all remember that, but they did it one time. About how they got the man who was getting ready to do a third felony. They were getting ready to send him away. They stopped him. They sent him to college instead of doing that with the judge. That was my idea of starting schools that for people that got felonies. They tried it, but it didn't go too far with Cozine Corp, but it, it was done one time. But I would like to, if they can get a building for the youth can meet up two nights on the weekdays and on a Saturday for the ones who can win on Saturday, and youth get together and put their heads together positive. But how about being businessmen? How about being entrepreneur? How about on we go, how about we go to school here? I, I was on my way here, you see what I got? I got right here the tax place down there. I seen this at go to school, for, learn some taxes. $106 for the book. Hey, I picked that. I'm going to do. That's what I do. I walk around. I look for positive stuff. I look for positive, positive stuff. If you're talking negative, you leave them. Bye. See you later. Keep it going. You, you, hey, that's, what, that's what's wrong with this youth. This youth don't want to. They, they want to make excuses. It's nothing to do. It's a lot to do. It, two heads or more is better than one. They got to put their heads together. They got to get together. They got to sit down. You got to put your heads together. There's a lot to do out here. There's a lot to do. I'm into everything. I'm into the music. I'm into the acting, I'm into everything. I'm into the mentoring, I'm into the churches, I'm into everything. I'm because I keep my mind positive. Then they wonder, they ask me, they ask me, how you do it? How you I keep my mind positive. I stay around positive people. So if you could, if y'all could like get somebody who can get the youth together where we can get a building and we can just go out here and get a lot of these young kids together, out all of them, get them together and get them in that building once or twice a, a week or whatever like that. Put your hands together, put your mind together. Ask them what you want to do, what do you like to do, how do you want to do it? That's what I am, I'm, I got two degrees. I got a degree for order engineer producing and right here at Eastwick College. Mr. Eastwick, I started that first year. He, he'll ask you, he'll tell you about me. I'm a straight A student, I ain't no dummy. I ain't, I'm a long shot from a dummy. Mm -hmm. But I was a wannabe. 
I choose to do what I did. When I was in New I choose to be on the street home. I choose to hang around them drugs. That's a choice. That's the choice you make. That's what I did. But I got tired of all that. I said I did too much of that negative stuff. How about I try something positive and get around the positive people right now? And that's what I do. That's all. I ain't gonna take up time because I got a lot to say about. <laughs> I got. I'm gonna keep some of this for the 24 when I go to Washington D.C. Because like I told Reverend Al Sharpton, I hear him. He said the same thing. Oh, if I get get a mic to the youth, y'all got something to say? I said I got a lot to say. You think I don't? But I got a lot to say. So I told him, you give me that mic. You ain't gonna like what I got to say, but I got I got plenty to say. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't come back, sir. You're only allowed to come up to the podium once. What's the law about people working, next neighbor working on Sunday? Is there any law? People want to sleep. What you can do is tomorrow, tomorrow, if Steve, give your contact number, give the city manager a call tomorrow. All right? Call me a call. But you're only allowed one trip to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, Regina DePasqua, Parker Avenue. Um, it is a full moon tonight. Um, I would like to ask that you consider the Economic Development Committee. Um, I don't know exactly what you said. The city used to have one. Um, I think it's a checks and balances. It's um, a whole bunch of different perspectives and we need every perspective that we can get and it's a completely volunteer uh, committee. Uh, I told you last time, just because I know you, I'm not going easy on you, I'm not that way. Um, I, I just ask that you consider that um, for those reasons. Um, Mary Street, all right, so they just started doing work, something that Summit, Light, Summit Avenue Light is not working yet. It's a nightmare coming down there because the light's not working, the right lane's closed, mm -hmm. and now they're working on the firehouse and the fire truck is facing, well, facing out of the city. I would prefer it was facing towards most of the city, but it's facing, heading out of the city. And the fire truck, if it's facing that way, if Mary Street was open, it could go up that way, but now it has to turn around on Summit or something to, because the work is being done there. It's just getting messy again. <laughs> on summit. I know there was a piece in the record about this traffic light, but um, it, we need it. We absolutely need the traffic light there. People don't know what to do when they get there because there's a light, but it's covered up and, and people in the left lane don't realize they're in the left lane for turning onto 17 and they pop on over to the right and it's but crazy. I know Mr. Loiacono spoke with the DOC. That has been an absolute horror show for three years I get yeah, right I, I, I think I've been speaking to DOT once a week for the last two months last week I was assured that this week at the work would at least be started and they would finish that light up now I on Mary did, Street well well I'm not sure what, what the problem on Mary Street Mary and Summit. That's I'm, just, I'm just referring to the traffic light that yeah. holds that that problem there now I, I happen to be down here late Friday uh, Friday night and they were working on the light Friday night. It was like 11 o'clock. They were working underneath the overpass. So I'm hoping that that light is operational sometime soon. Our as far as the fire truck, the fire truck is concerned, just so you know, uh, you may have heard earlier I reported on the, the, the yeah, driveway. Yeah, they're doing the work. I understand that. That's, when that's got nothing of, to do with the, the road work. That's got to do with the firehouse. Right, the firehouse work. I understand <laughs> that. But the fire truck is parked in the street, and it's facing, heading towards Hasbrook Heights Lodi. It's not heading, facing towards... Hackensack, you know what I mean? They have to turn around because the majority of the calls are going to be that way, not that way. It, it just, and I said if Mary Street was open, they could zip around, right. yes, but it's not. So, it's just things, I drive by that way every day. Um, is there a dollar amount on your uh, public re relations person's contract? Mr. Scrivo? Uh, yes, there is, uh, Mayor. The dollar amount is a monthly fee of six thousand five hundred dollars a month okay for that amount of money I would expect this man to be a lot more civil to me he was absolutely rude to me nasty and he had no business saying what he said I will not go into detail you all got the emails whether or not you read them I don't know but your public relations person totally lacks civility he had no business. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of you guys. I'm, I am a resident expressing a concern, and I'm going to keep expressing my concerns, no matter what, okay? And 
he had no business. He was offensive. I, I was upset. And for him to tell me that if I'm worried about you guys, I have to go through him, not you, he had no business. No business. And for $6,500 a month, a, a month, that's not getting your money's worth. Um, Mr. Icon, I came to see you about five years ago with the same concern about the youth. And I actually started a 501c3 organization called Worlds Apart Unlimited. But someone called... Excuse me, ma'am, could you speak into the microphone, please? Someone Can't hear called Dyfus and uh, two social workers and two police officers literally bust into my house and took my daughter. So how do you run a children's organization when they take your daughter? Of course, I got a letter stating the allegations were unfounded but yeah, it took me a year to go through the court processes. I support this gentleman because I'm working with people in New York, Rockaway Task Force, Save Our, our Youth, Enough is Enough. They are really concerned about the, the welfare of our, our teenagers. They're in danger. My mother always said, if you're in danger, run to the police. Somebody follows you drive the car to the police station. I myself am intimidated by the police. They arrested me, threw me in the back of a police car with six teenagers who had no drugs, no weapons. We were just talking. This is unacceptable in this day and age. I'm sorry, I, I, I wasn't a kid. This only happened five years ago. And it's still happening, and I feel bad. When I tell my kids now from five years ago, they're not kids anymore, they're 21 years old, 22 years old. You're driving, somebody stops you immediately, put your hands in the air. Just put your hands in the air. These policemen have guns, and they are trained to shoot to kill, okay? And I am very proud of my young men in the streets, the so-called gangs, uh, kicked out of high school for being bad. They've gotten their diplomas. They've gotten their citizenship papers. They've gotten their driver's license. They are going to secondary schools. They are becoming good citizens. They got their social security. I've taken to them to the bank. They open bank accounts. They're saving money. Things can be done. But like the gentleman said, we need a place to do it. I cannot do it one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one anymore. There's one of the boys, Will's brother is 12. He must call sometimes 60 times in one day. He must have anxiety attacks. I said, my husband, please go talk to Jefferson. The kid is calling me 50 times a day. And what I hear these kids, three young black girls, real short, I wanted to get my nails done to look cute to go somewhere on a Sunday. And I saw them walking and I said, Girls, do you know where I can get my nails done? They said, well, maybe in Englewood. And then all of a sudden they said, do you know what our teacher said? And I said, what? It will never amount to anything because our parents never went to college. I said, that is a lie from the devil. My mother and father never went past the fifth grade. I mean, these kids, and, and I, you know, I don't know if anybody knows it, but racism is alive and well in this town, in this state, in this country. And we have to stop looking at black, white. I'm white, my daughter's black and white. We both speak Spanish, and I'm now married to a Native American Indian, so we have it all covered, all right? Don't, you can't call us racist. And I will not give up. You, you don't have to give me a place. I, we'll do it in the street if we have to. We will gather. We will accomplish. We will give these kids vision and motivation. They are not stupid. They can speak two languages. They know that God is real because their parents are bringing them up the way, they're training them the way they should go. And the Bible says if you train a child up the way he should go when he's young, when he gets older, he will not depart from it. If, if you want to build it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
If you want a building, I will give you a building every Friday, 294 Second Street. Yeah. Every right. Friday from we six to eight. Six. You got it. You got it. You want to start this Friday if you want. I'll see you at six o'clock. Six o'clock. And we we need a basketball hoop too, by the way. You got a, you got a, you got speed hoops out there. All right. So we're back and forth, man. All right, we got it. Okay. That's it. It's done. Let me tell you. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Oh my God. Let me tell you. My boys are gonna just. Think they're not gonna believe this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nunemacher. I'm not going to be as excited as that, Jason Nunemacher, Prospect Avenue. I just wanted to, I was up here before asking questions. I just wanted to come and uh, commend the council on two resolutions. First, the reappointment of Steve. I think okay. with everything we have going on, uh, consistency in that position is important. And uh, I think that's a, a, a great appointment. And second of all was the m, &M building with the lawn. As you know, um, that's going to be used as a, as a playground of sorts. Glad we could help. We have uh, preschool and kindergarten kids who are going to be starting there in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere for them to play. Um, a lot, most of them are going, a fair amount are going to have uh, learning and physical disabilities. So that's actually part of their IEPs. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you for your cooperation. Absolutely. And with the, uh, our population increase, uh, I hope we can continue to cooperate and uh, do what's best for our kids. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're quite welcome. We're glad to help, Jason. Thanks. Yes, sir. Could you give your name to the yes, person? Yes, my name is Larry Stewart. I live in 52 Hobart. Okay. That's my better half. She's outspoken, you can see. Okay. What I'm up here for, I agree with her, this gentleman here. But what I'm here for is some really touched my heart for a short period of time, about six months. I was in upstate New York and I worked in group homes. People were physically and mentally handicapped. And they have a very good system up there. The people were treated very well, you know? And I don't know how the system is in New Jersey, but um, I would hope the city, the state, the governor, with God, Jesus, touch his heart, that he keep these places open. Cause you know, these people, they, they, they need to the care. They get used to the people that take care of them. They might be mentally disabled, but they get used to seeing the same faces. Maybe they can't talk, maybe they can't communicate. They get used to seeing the same faces. The people that care for them fall in love with these people. I did when I did the work. I didn't get paid much money, but it was a, it was a, a, a work, you know, something that really touched my heart. So I would hope that this city would really look at this and do everything you can and join these people and throw your hands in the pot and do whatever you gotta do to get the, the governor and the state officials to keep these places open. And thank you for offering that building, Councilman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's it, you know what I mean? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, Lance Stewart, Hackensack. Um, I want to address the issue of racial profiling. I was in Carver Park during the Basketball Summer League, which is a great program that Mr. Sims, Councilman Sims, runs. Um, at one of the first playoff games there, and, and the teams are, some, most of them are from Hackensack, but they come from all parts, uh, Inglewood, Teaneck, Patterson. I'm not sure if there's Passaic, there are Teaneck. However, at this one game after it was over, and most of the people are very orderly. In fact, the majority, you know, all of them are. At the end of this game, the police approached in that park, and you thought it was a Gestapo. There were policemen pushing people out of the park on every single corner. There were police cars frisking people. It's ridiculous. I have a 20-year-old son, and I have to tell him every day when you walk outside, know what to do with your hands when you are stopped by a police officer. So I did notice down on Hudson Street, and I know they have the situation with the homeless people, but that's profiling. And if it's going to start down there, it's already started up on Central Avenue and Second Street Park. And our police officers and our director of police needs to know, not the commissioner, because I know he um, steps in, 
director of police needs to know that we're not going to stand for racial profiling or any kind of profiling. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Good evening again. Um, for those of you in the audience, and we had a, a, it's a very um, close audience, on audience today, I should say, people in the back of me. Um, I think we need a meeting to address just this problem about the kids and about not having a place. And I know both uh, Councilman Sims and Leah Battaglia, that's one of your things that you want to do. You want to, we don't, we asked for a girls and boys club eight years ago and it never happened. We got a little one and it never materialized. It never, it never amounted through Larry, Larry Riley and myself in uh, the Second Ward Block Watch. And it never really happened. And we do need something for our kids, and we know that. And we do pay a lot of taxes. And I think this group should be in, we should have one night that we all can discuss what we can do about it and what we're going to do about it and come together and with all these concerns. I mean, they all just told you that we have a problem. We know we do. And I know Mr. Sims, Mr. Sims runs a, an excellent basketball program for over 25 years during the summer. And I want to commend, commend him and, and it is, but it's just one of many programs. And a lot of kids don't play basketball. They want to do something else. And we have a lot of idle hands and kids doing nothing. And we do need a recreation center. And we're going to work on it. So maybe you could organize all these people into a meeting. Uh, tell what your plans are, the m and building, what you want to raise, and get input from uh, your group that you said you went to, to evaluate and to check out, and, and just make it one big meeting with that concern, with that mission, to get something and to do it soon. And I think you have the people right here that are willing to work. You have volunteers, you have concerns. I mean, you have them right here. And, and it came out tonight, and it wasn't supposed to be that way, but it did. Okay, getting back to the city business. <laughs> Um, I agree with Regina that that, that that position shouldn't be isolated. I think I was involved with Peter Tucci and Cenzari years ago, back in the 90s, when we had a, a redevelopment committee. And it was made up of all kinds of citizens from, from the city with different concerns and different input. It shouldn't just be one man making decisions or just putting the burden on him. It should be people bringing, in, bringing to the table what needs to be brought to the table and uh, and make it a committee, and that he could be the director of, the, of the, the position and of the committee. And we did that with business people. It was Tucci, it was Cenzari, it was uh, uh, Pizer, it was all, all those people. That's how I got involved with the, with the uh, building codes and, and such. Uh, the other thing I was shocked about is keeping Mr. Leocano. I was surprised and shocked. I'm going to be positive about it. I mean, you want to keep him for a year. Uh, I'm agreeing if you guys see the reason for doing it. I hope that things have changed because in the past eight years uh, I wasn't happy and, and most of the citizens of Hackensack wasn't, wasn't ha weren't happy. So I just want to be positive about it and I hope things change with it and that we could make, um, we can make it work. Because um, like I said, I don't want to be, I'm not positive. Okay, thank you. Uh, Amo County Serena, Brook Street. Uh, David, that's the first time I saw you raise your voice. It's the whole time I know you. Mm -hmm. You got good results, though. <laughs> good for you. Do that more often, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, you're right. Well, today, I, I think you guys have been in office 51 days tonight. And I think that is, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of critics, and the critics have, should have their time to speak, criticize the things you do. But we should also recognize the things that you have done that are positive. First of all, you've put the TV on. The last council promised for eight years to do that. You guys did it within 51 days. You picked up, you said you were gonna pick up the garbage twice a week. You started a, pro, a pilot program in the first ward about a month after you were elected. The prior council didn't even address that problem. You, you uh, there was many questions about the substation on Hudson Street, whether that was, should be there whether there was any police presence there at all. There were complaints, and I was one of the people, as would these people sit back here, complaining to the prior council. Nothing was done about it. You closed the substation within 51 days. <laughs> Kathy has been here many times about the problem with the resolution concerning the uh, newspaper racks. And she's, she's asked a million times for the re to see the resolution, to rewrite the resolution, et cetera, never been done. 
At the present time, the new resolution, the new, the new city attorney is drawing up a resolution to uh, take care of Kathy's problem with her, her, her uh, uh, newspaper stands. Well, yeah, that was done nice within 51 one. days. The clerk's office was open, and not, not to the clerk's fault, it's just short of hand, they opened six hours a day because they had a problem with lunch breaks and secretarial coverage. You opened, the, you opened the clerk's office for eight hours starting last week after being in office 51 days. Uh, I don't know what, I know and I know that uh, retaining Mr. Lacko is, is a, a controversial issue because a lot of us disagree with a lot of things he did over the last eight years. But I think that uh, being, being, keeping the continuity of this government going, I think you're doing the right thing, at least giving him the opportunity to prove himself, and if he doesn't within a year, well, then you have your options, and I'm sure he's aware of that. I just think that, and and, and listen to your critics, and they're, they're worth listening to, but I think you deserve a good pat on the back. All you've done, you continue to do. Leo and Dave have been out on the street every day, making sure the streets are clean, making sure the garbage, the, the DPW is functioning. Now, these two guys are doing a lot of time to that, and you see improvements. I know some residents that already congratulating them for having their streets cleaned up. So uh, uh, just keep up the good work. They're going to say, we can expect this in the next 51 days. There will be no work left to do for the next four years. So slow it down a little bit. Emil, <laughs> you forgot something. So, we paved Euclid Avenue, the streets. Oh, and they paved the streets. Yeah. Thanks for correcting me. I wouldn't forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's it. Seeing nobody else coming forward, can I get a motion to close the meeting to the public, please? No offense. Second. Offered by Mr. Battaglia, seconded by Mrs. Canestrino. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's good. Okay, at this time, uh, this is the time when the council will, will get to address any comments they want to make towards the uh, public. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Battaglia. Do you have anything to say? Well, first of all, they are really happy. I see a lot of people, you know, that maybe never happened before. Sometimes we used to be like maybe six, ten people now. We got almost a full room. Related to the recreation building, that is something that I got in my mind for many years. Okay, I've been looking in different cities. I went to Fairlawn and Tine, different places. Even I was in Pennsylvania last week. And I get to see, see a magazine that they got sample of this facility and what we can do. So we continue working on it. And then I am looking, I spread to Mr. Loyacon already, an area where maybe we can put a swimming pool. But we have to look for thing, what is the right thing to do? You know, because a swimming pool in the open is going to be used only for three months, four months taps. So maybe we need a, a nice recreation building and we see what we can do there and the way we can keep the kids away from the street. And no question about that. Okay? So thank you for coming and we will continue doing changes and the way we can improve the city together. Related to Mr. Luyakon, I think he needs an opportunity to prove himself. Sometimes, for instance, when you end up in kind of position, you don't know who really is running the city. So we're going to work with him and let's see what we can accomplish. Thank you. I'd like to echo Kathy Salvo's thoughts on how fortunate we are uh, as a community to have Councilman Sims and Councilman Battaglia sitting on this side of the dais. Um, we heard a lot tonight from the residents, you know, concerns about the community and having things to do for our youth programs. And, and sitting right here is someone who's been involved in basketball and someone who's been involved in soccer in this town for many, many, many years. And their hearts are in the right place. And I'm also very pleased to see as many people come out tonight and communicate with us, because that is critical to all of our success. We need to hear your concerns and we need to help you. We need to have solutions together. Very, very important. Um, just a couple of other things on the agenda tonight that I think were worth mentioning. Um, I think it's, it, it's, it's an excellent step in the right direct direction by our police director. We see we have a number of class two police officers that we announced tonight. I mean, this is a wonderful way to 
um, put police officers on the street and uh, at, at a good cost to the citizens of the community, you know, keeping in line with our budgetary issues and still providing the safety and, and the patrol on the streets that's necessary. So I think that's to definitely to be applauded. Um, and I know there was some talk tonight also about our Director of Economic Development. First of all, let me just say I think it's wonderful for Hackensack that we need a Director of Economic Development. I think that we're really at a, a crossroads here in town and I think we're going in the right direction and we need someone to help us and direct us and, and put the right resources in place to see Hackensack back again the way we all remember it even better than where we all remember it. To, to have our Main Street again flourish and to have our community um, thrive and our residents happy. So I think that that um, position is going to be a very, very important one and very instrumental in performing those activities for our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to address home, Miss Sissy's group. I will be a liaison to your group as far as getting this pool together. Somewhere in Hackensack, we will have this big thermometer where we will raise money and watch it grow. We have to look into some kind of development and see what it's going to cost us, but I will be the liaison. And although I can't swim personally, I will help you as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I will pay for your swimming lessons. <laughs> Ms. Grayman? Um, I'd like to uh, just make a few comments. Um, we ran on a uh, platform of change, and we've done quite a bit. But I would focus again on having more unity, having more transparency, looking at this in a way as to bridge all our differences trying to work together, making sure that everyone is involved, n not allowing some people not to be involved in the process. I am determined and still determined to fix and reform the city government. And that would mean better budgeting, better city government. We as council people came into this forum, came into being, became a government for a purpose. Let's remember that there was a purpose and keep that purpose foremost in, our, in front of us. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to address Ms. Sissy. Um, as far as the pool goes, I think we're, what we're probably going to end up doing. I mean, we knew we knew a lot of folks were coming for the pool tonight. We're, oh, Jesus, I can't even see you. There you are. Uh, we knew a lot of people were coming for the pool because we got the flyers and, and the letter from home. But uh, I can foresee us doing uh, a study, a feasibility study. Um, we have to think of locations, the feasibility of those locations. Uh, fiscal feasibility, very important. Um, but we are going to do that. I, I foresee that coming. Um, rec center, you know, I, I'm not totally on board with that. I think we definitely need a, I think the M&M building for a, size, a city the size of Hackensack just doesn't suffice. And we need something more for the kids. Um, going back to the kids, uh, you made a comment before. I coached for over 20 years in Hackensack, and I coached the two young men you were talking about before who we lost on Central, you know, on Central Avenue. Coached both of them for quite a long time. And uh, I'm a firm believer that the, the best form of crime prevention is through our youth programs. It's, uh, and I've always said to the police, I said, you know, you, you guys should be supporting us because we're, we're keeping these kids off the streets for you to, you know, it's one less you know, the person you have to worry about that might get themselves into some trouble because if they're not idle hands or if they're not, you know, if they get grabbed by the wrong people, you know, bad things can happen. And uh, so I'm a firm believer in programs. So, I, you know, the program that Dave, that this gentleman was talking about, I, I appreciate Dave stepping up and offering a location. Um, anything to get these kids involved and get them off the street is, is by far one, should be one of our most important duties as, as citizens. And uh, I think everybody up here on this dais is, a, you know, 
full support of anything to keep these kids off the street and getting them something to do. And we're at this council, I, I believe, will we'll work hard to come up with some solutions and, and try to get this center done. And uh, like I said, feasibility of putting a pool in this city is, is on the horizon. All right. And uh, as far as the, the North Jersey Developmental Center, I'd really like to look into that, that resolution. Um, I think it's very worthwhile. Um, I have a cousin who was in a similar situation, and uh, she's in a group home. But uh, these programs are necessary, and, and, and you can't be, these people don't react well to disruption in their lives. They're, they're very used to, you know, a routine, and uh, I think it's very important that these places like this stay open. And what else do we have? Uh, Columbus Park. Um, I think that's a great thing. They're going to redo the little boat down there. That's nice. Long overdue. I think Kathy's right. We certainly got our money out of that thing. It's been there a long time. Um, what else? I think the gentleman left about the Vision Place in, in Porter Street. I, I definitely have to see that with my own eyes. And as far as Mr. Loyakino goes, I too believe he needs, he, he deserves a chance. Um, you know, Steve and I worked together for four years because I was on the past, with the past council. Um, it's a lot going on in the city right now. Uh, a lot. A lot of people don't even realize as far as redevelopment opportunities for the city. Um, tons of things going on. Everybody's very, very busy. Um, and at this time, I personally feel that it was a necessity to keep me, Mr. Loiacono here at this time. I don't think it was a good time uh, to be shifting gears and changing uh, city managers at this time. And that's, that's really uh, one of the main reasons. And I, you know, I think we can do, still do a lot together. There's a lot of stuff to be done, a lot of great stuff gonna happen in the city in the next few years, believe me. You're gonna be amazed, so um, thank you again. All right, and I think that's it for the night. All right. <laughs> Motion to uh, close. I will offer. Offered. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Love hitting this thing. Very careful with that.